What is up, homies? Christian back at again with our twin sons action figure close up. And today I have something for us very different. As you can see here, it is not Hasbro or a Black Series. Today we'll be looking at the SH Figure Art Star Wars Story Solo Chewie. And as you can see right off the bat here, that this packaging is kind of the same, kind of very different. Pardon the studio lights. As you can see, the first thing is it's much more reflective of everything around you. But you get this big bay window in the front. Star Wars, SH Figure Arts. It says Solo, Star Wars Story up here. It says who's you got right here. It's by Bandai and Tamashi Nations, the ones who made this figure. This side of it, you get a picture of Figure Arts Chewie. No bio on the back, we just get some nice action shots of him and a glimpse of some of the accessories he comes with. We get Japanese legalese. Good luck trying to decipher that. And right here just says, SH Figure Arts is a new standard figure series and incorporates the Bandai action figure art under the theme of pursuing character expression through humanoid action. Little Englishy, I feel like. On the side, we just get this nice silver. Silver is what they use for original trilogy era. And it just says Star Wars. And a little figure arts little splurb again. Top, no window or anything. Just tells you what you got here. Pretty basic packaging, but you know, all the money went into the figure. And that's what we're here to see. So let's free Chewie from his plastic prism. So here I have Chewie in front of me. And as you could tell just right off the bat, the first glimpse, this is leagues above anything Hasbro can put out. Now to be fair, figure arts are more pricey than, than, uh, than by Hasbro. Hasbro Black Series typically run you know, $20 to $25. A figure arts will typically run you about $60 to $80. So you get what you pay for, and this is definitely what you get. So let's take a look at him up here. They also use a face printing technology. They've been using face printing for years before Hasbro has, before Hasbro's Marvel Legends even. So here we have the infamous Chewie with his goggles. In my opinion, the best look for Chewie. And you can see his eyes through there. You can see like that brown is printed on his nose along with his lips. And just the overall paint app is a lot more detailed on there. There's a lot more of a wash to it, a lot more of a gradient to it. The side of his head. Now there is this line that goes down the side of his head. And we'll go over why that exists in a second. You can press it to hide it a little bit better. But you can see the gradient from the dark browns and almost like a gray into the lighter browns and stuff. Because you guys have to remember this is a younger Chewie in Solo. So you know he's not as bushy as you would see in Empire, even Jedi side of the head. The goggles are just very well textured. There's actually plastic in there as you can see the light reflection off of it. They painted the sides of it and everything. They painted this a nice silver metallic going down to the torso to his bandolier. He's got that solo and sorry my part of my breathing and my deep breaths. I'm very congested right now getting over into sinus infection so apologize in advance. But you can see on this bandolier, it's his solo bandolier, so it's got that cross-section to it. And it's got like the shotgun shells. I don't even really know how to describe what the gun he used. I feel like it's, well, it's kind of like a Star Wars shotgun, you know? He's got the pouches here. They are very well detailed. The sculpt work on it, they actually sculpted on like a screw cap almost, it looks like. They've actually sculpted in some empty ones. There's a little pouch here. They painted the little silver rivet on there even. Down here, he has more pouches. They painted them brown. And the silver rivets, it's not really showing up too well here. Let me see if I can get some light on that for you guys. There you go, now you can see a little bit better. The silver rivets they painted on there. The silver straps on there on his bag. And on the back, he's got some more shotgun shells, as well as some empty pouches, because you know, he's been using them. Chewie's a busy guy. He doesn't sit there and just look at the ammo. He uses it, you know? But overall, I mean, Chewie's a very basic figure, so they did a lot of sculpt work on there. You can see a lot of the hairs and stuff, and there's a very nice gradient from the darker brown to the lighter brown to the darker brown. And they got a little bit of gray in here to mix it up. His arms are often that gray, and you know, they go into that lighter brown, just like in the movie. His hand, so they did do his hands a little bit weird. It's like completely covered on this side. 
And then on this side, you can see it's his fist. And the only unsightly thing I'd say about this figure are the elbow joints. <clears throat> the elbow joints kind of stick out like a sore thumb, but they do it for good reason. We'll go over that in a little bit. His legs, the knees are very well done. That knee joint is just looks very good in there. <clears throat> They did the gradient matching down still, so it still looks good. We got that dark brown to light brown to his feet, to his little black toenails. Looks really good. But, you know, overall, a basic figure. It's not like he's detailed in the sense that he has a lot of hair on him. They did a great job sculpting in that hair and painting that hair. But you guys know what I mean. Chewie's a basic figure. He doesn't have a very intricate costume or anything like, say, some Jedi or, you know, like a Stormtrooper or a Scarif Trooper or something. They have very intricate details on their costumes. Chewie's just, he's a Wookiee, you know? And he runs around naked like Wookiees do. So, let's go over articulation on this bad boy, shall we? For his head, he looks up, which is done by having this be a separate piece plastic that fur in the back so he gets pretty good up no down and that's because of this in the front that fur coming down just blocks any semblance of down coming down he's got swivel left swivel right he's got tilt great for expressing you know Chewie's he questions a lot in this movie he's like this is really a good idea huh so you can really get that expression well you know just have him staring at Lando head tilted questioning way for his arms let's start off with his shoulders he has butterfly shoulders which means you can move it forward like that and back it allows you to get an extended range of motion in the front a little bit in the back but it's mainly to get it into the front so he's got the butterfly shoulders he gets up past 90 swivels all the way around he does have a bicep swivel. It's a little tight of a joint, but that's okay. I'd rather have a too tight of a joint than too loose. So he's got that there. Goes up, as I said. Now the elbows, they're unsightly, but like I said before, it's for a good reason. He gets up a little past 90, which is really good for a figure like this. You know, you expect the plastic to get in the way, but they did it very well comes down and hides, the fur comes down and hides the joint, so it looks good. His wrist. So, Figure Arts does a different sort of wrist peg system. I'll take this off so you guys can see in there. You can see their wrists only go in one direction, but you can actually rotate the wrist, so you know you could have it go swivel up and down, or if you hold that down, swivel it around, you can have it swivel left to right. And the hands do come off. And you know what? I'm just going to leave this hand off to show you why the hands come off here in a minute. So, that's the wrist system. And he has a fist here. The other arm. Obviously, you know, it's all the same, so we're not really going to go over this too much. His torso. Let's go over. His torso. Not a problem with this chewy figure. Not a lot of ab crunch. He gets a little down. He goes back. Goes back more than he goes down, to be honest. So, that's a small shame, but Chewie's a very hard figure. And I've noticed pretty much every figure company has a hard time with ab crunch with Chewie with this fur. There's no real good way to hide the ab crunch in the fur, because no one's done soft goods fur. It's all hard plastics. <laughs> So it's very hard to hide a joint in there. So, you know, they have it a little bit lower, but that causes it not to be as good because it's so far down. His hips. They come out. Leg comes out to 90, which is really nice to see. Comes forward all the way. Comes back all the way. Really nice to see with a figure like this. And if you can see... There's actually two joints in here. You have one up here and one down here. So you do that, and that actually pulls that down. And what that allows you to do is to push that one up a little bit. So you still get that range of motion you want. But look how clean and crisp that looks compared to you shove that one up there. You can speed the peg and everything. So very nice of figure art. Some good technology right there to hide that. 
really like that a lot. His knee comes up to, yeah, what is that, 90, like 115 degrees. Again, as you guys know by now, I'm not into geometry, so I'm not very good at that. So it comes up to about there, but look how crisp that looks. That looks so good for being a double jointed knee. There's no unsightly joints in there. They hide the pegs inside of the plastic. They sculpt this and paint this all beautifully. So it looks very natural. Really love Chewie's knees here. Might be my favorite point of articulation on this figure is those knees, just of how well they're done. His ankles, left, right, up, back. They do rock. Not as much as Hasbro's rockers, but you can get them to rock a bit. Now, a distinct factor from Hasbro and figure arts is every figure arts figure, at least every figure arts figure that I've encountered has a toe joint. So you can have them in a very natural walking pose. You know, if you had this foot forward and you had this foot back, you can actually have that toe joint so you can actually get him. You know, look pretty natural walking, you know? With his arms up right, it looks like he's doing some sort of tightrope balance. But, looks very good. Now, I said I was gonna leave this hand off for a reason, and actually we'll get to that in a second, because he comes with a lot of accessories, but in terms of standard accessories that I've shown you guys so far, he comes with one. The most standard accessory he comes with is his shotgun that we were talking about before. Now this shotgun, very well done. They have this metallic sheen on the plastic and the paint. It looks very good. And details on it, everything. You just Every time I look at this gun, I find something more on it to look at. They have the rivets on the sides, as well as the line work. The pistol grip is textured and everything. It looks very well done. Does not move the pump, but look how good that pump looks. And the barrel, they have the exhaust ports on there and everything. They have, I don't even know what this is. But they have it on there, and it looks great. The scope looks very well done. Let's take a look at the other side. Now, this gun does have a bit of articulation on it, too. This handlebar, if I recall correctly, moves, I think. All right. I was wrong. <laughs> All right, you know, guys, I'm discovering these figures with you, you know? So, I was wrong. My bad. So it's not articulated. I'm thinking of the Hasbro one actually. So points there for Hasbro on their gun. If I recall correctly, Hasbro's is the one. And you know what actually? Let me sit over here and finesse this. I have Hasbro's gun right here. And let me see. Yep. So I was thinking of Hasbro's gun. I'm sorry guys. That's my bad. But honestly, now that I have a Hasbro's gun right here too, let's take a look and compare the two. I mean, Hasbro did a great job, especially for the price point, but Figure Arts just has that crisp look to it, I think is the way I'd put it. Hasbro, you can tell the mold's been ran a lot. You know, the lines, they're not as crisp and clean, especially like back here, the sort of muddled together and stuff compared to the Figure Arts. The Hasbro does have a dirtier look. It's more of that gray metallic, while the Figure Arts is silver. But Figure Arts goes in to actually give it more paint applications. You know, they got the black up here, the black barrel, the silver on the sights itself. Looks very well done. There's just a lot more edge to it, if that makes any sense. Like, especially if you look at the handles, Hasbro's a lot more rounded out. Figure Arts is crisp clean angles so very good job there on this gun I'm a big fan of it now I'm leaving the handoff for a reason because as I said before it comes with only one accessory that is a typical accessory as you guys would know it but he comes with multiple different hands he comes with the fist that I showed you for his right hand. He comes with a trigger finger hand. They all have that weird fur on the side, hand inside. So he's got that trigger finger hand. That trigger finger hand just 
Ooh, that's a tight fit. It's a very tight fit, but there you go. And then you can just pop that hand. I do recommend putting the gun in the hand first and then popping the hand on, just because it's easier. And the problem with Chewbacca I have with his hands is that that fur gets in the way when you're trying to put it on. And man, that joint is tight. Holy cow. There we go. But it's got the up and down swivel on it. So Chewbacca holds his gun very nicely. So he comes with that on his right hand. He also comes with a... Helps if I put his toes back down. <laughs> he also comes with an open palm hand, sort of just a relaxed hand, you know? He's just sort of standing around. He's not fist and about ready to punch someone. He's not gonna shoot anyone either. You know, you can use this to wave hello to someone if you wanted to. He comes with those for his right hands. For his left hand, he comes with his fist. That is currently on there. He comes with a waving hello hand. And then he also comes with a barrel holding hand. So this one, just to put the barrel on and let's stick that barrel holding hand on there. Let's see if we can get him to hold his gut up. So again, with those joints, you can choose which way you want it before you put the hand on. But for his barrel holding hand, we're gonna keep it side to side like that. Left joint is not as tight as the right. And you can see, use that butterfly joint. The figure arts, you gotta, you gotta plan the articulation a little bit more. You can't just go cranking them as much, I find. But he does hold that quite nicely. Oh, there we go. Holds the gun quite nicely. Can he really truly shoulder it and look down the sight? That's always the true test of a figure. Can't quite look down the sight, but he can look like he's about to be getting into position to look down the sight. You know, like maybe he just fired off a shot and he's checking it to see where it went. He's about to be putting it up to him, but he holds it very nicely. Again, you gotta sort of plan this first. You don't wanna just go cranking, and that might also just be my fear of breaking these figures, so I don't like to go around cranking them. I like to plan it a little bit, then slowly move it into place. There you go. Turn his head. He just holds it very well, too. He looks very crisp, very clean, holding it like this. And, in terms of other accessories, which are not usually part of an accessory, I'm gonna go back to this line here. I take this off. <laughs> you have this terrifying abomination of just a peg system. But, he comes with two more face plates. So, let's stick this one on, close that bad boy up, and you can see the line, it gets a lot better. The angry Chewbacca. And honestly, you could swap out this bandolier, like a Black Series bandolier, and make yourself a very nice original trilogy Chewbacca. Because without the goggles, he looks pretty close to episode four. I wouldn't say five or six. The main isn't as long as it is in five or six, but I'd say it's close enough to pass for episode four. He's got this growling head. He's roaring at you. Very well done. You can see the face printing on the eyes. It's really well done. He looks straight on. And the sculpt work, those fangs look very menacing. He's got that pink tongue in there. He's got the little brown mustache like he does in the movie. The mouth is all pink like it is. And again, those teeth, they're actually printed white. You can actually see there's like some shading in between them and stuff. It's a little hard to pick up on the camera. There's shading in between them. It just looks very well done. It looks really good this way might be displaying him like this. You know, you can get him in a pose where he'd be like bending over to someone, growling in their face and in intimidation. But Chewie's not always mad. In fact, I'd say generally, he seems to be pleasant. So you also just have this relaxed face without goggles. 
And I think this is actually the same sculpt. They just didn't add the goggles in. That's the first one. So, you know, he only wears the goggles for a few minutes in the film, although in my opinion, it's pretty iconic. So I'll probably actually end up displaying with the goggles now that I think about it. But this one looks very good too. You can see his eyes in there. Very well done on the print job. His lips, nice little bit of pink on there for his lips hiding behind all the fur. And something I feel like most people don't pay attention to is the almost the snout of Chewbacca. And I see some figures, like especially the Hot Toys, it really almost looks monkey-like with the way they accentuate the snout out, but not here. It's perfect, you know, it's a little outgoing because he is a beast. Well, he's a humanoid, he's intelligent, but he is a beast. So it accentuates out a little bit, but not too much. The nose is really well sculpted, not too wide, not too skinny. Just that iconic chewy face. And just that side profile shot. Really well done. Now, I'm gonna put his goggles back on because goggle chewy is best chewy. <laughs> so, I actually did something a little bit different today because I just happened to find them. I have these figure arts chewy here. And then right here, I have the Hasbro Black Series Chewbacca. Figure Arts, in general, along with all other import brands from Japan, runs a little bit smaller than domestic figures like Hasbro. So here he is next to it. And as you can see, the Hasbro is actually cut off by the camera. That's how much taller he is. So, but there's been a lot of arguing online that the Hasbro Chewbacca is too tall. So that would put the figure arts Chewbacca at the perfect height. But, I mean, you can just see here in terms of paint application and sculpt work, there, there's almost no comparison. The face looks a little rough, I would put it, on the Hasbro one. And the paint, you know, they try to put the gradient on there, but it's very stark compared to the figure arts, which just flows through more. But again, I'd like to emphasize $20. $60. So I'm not saying Hasbro is bad. Hasbro is very good for what you're paying for. However, I know there are some collectors who watch this show who like to have a more refined taste on their figures, and they don't mind paying a little bit extra for getting a very nice figure. I also have here, to compare him, the original Chewbacca. And for that, I'm actually going to take him off screen real quick and put on his roaring face, because that one has it. And again, you can see here the size difference. And you know what, just for funsies, I'll put him in the back. You can see the roaring face here. And honestly, I feel like Hasbro actually did a better job with their original Chewbacca. This one was a, I believe, a 2014 release, I wanna say. Maybe, oh, or early 2015, actually. I think this was the first wave of 2015. So, they try with the gradient here, but they really nailed it here. And you could take this off and put it on him, the bandoliers. It'd be a bit bigger on him, but I think it could work. And I think with that, you could have a very good original trilogy one because you can actually find the figure arts Chewbacca. I've seen them on sale sometimes for as little as like $30, $40. So if you have this one and you want to upgrade him to maybe a photoreal head, a little bit crisper, or like this original Chewbacca was notorious for just poor articulation on him. So if you wanted some better articulation for photography or your poses on your display, you could try to upgrade to him, take the bandolier off him, put it on him if you wanted to. So, overall though, I would say this Chewbacca is very good. And for all my Wookiee lovers out there, I would highly recommend this figure. In my opinion, it is the definitive six inch scale Chewbacca figure. It looks amazing. Articulation is great for a Chewbacca figure. And you just get so many accessories with him. You only get the gun, but I'm talking, you get the head plates, 
you get the hands. You get a lot with them. But I'm curious, let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any figure arts. And you know, if you have any pictures of them, tag us at Ed Twin Sons on uh, Instagram and show us some pictures, you know? But until next time, may the force be with you.